going around talking about letting, not raising the debt ceiling. That's what they, that was one of their major concerns, and saying we don't, we don't have to do that. That's, that, but that's, that's what, what you should have done. If you, if you didn't raise the debt ceiling, then we could have cut spending. So you said that we were paying our bills. We don't pay our bills by going deeper into debt. That's avoiding paying our bills and guaranteeing eventual default. For, let me interrupt. Do we tax too little or do we spend too much as a government? I mean, look at our, look at our deficit. Rel exactly. Relative to other countries. We are a relative low tax country, and we are not a relative. Are high we a spender. high spending country? No, we're not. No, well, not how relative, did we get not relative to our GDP and relative to other countries. No, I mean I could, I will, I'm, I would be more than happy after this to okay. send you well, a series of charts that document this. Mr. Schiff, do you have a comment on that? Sure, Mike. So, Mr. Schiff. Yeah, yeah. What, what percentage of my income should the government take? What, what do you think would be fair? I'm, I'm not going to give well, you a number. Well, just give me right a guess. Here. Yeah. Well, just, I just, what do you think would be fair? You say we're not, I'm not paying enough taxes. How, how high should my taxes be? What percentage of my income should be taken away from me by the government? We have a progressive income tax right, structure. But just, what do you think would have... half, 60 percent, 70 percent? How much should they take? Wow, well, gonna, well that is so gonna, far beyond. Well, we're going to, wait, wait, wait. wait, 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 wait hang on, hang on. Let me say that, you know, taxing the rich. The gentleman from Tennessee well, has the time. Uh, yeah, I'll just interrupt. You know, taxing the rich is a great idea until the rich run out of money, and that seems well, to be Well, my point is, I'm already almost paying half my income in taxes right now. Hang on a second. Hang on a second. That is impossible. It's not impossible. No, it's not. Okay, this, this, let me, Mr. Chairman. Um, let, let's let's shift yeah, gears for one second hey, because yeah, this yeah, is going to go on forever. Uh, uh, Dr. Boucher, do you feel that government, Dr. Boucher, do you feel that government jobs create revenue? And I think you said that the stimulus one had uh, the majority of jobs created were private sector jobs. Do public jobs create revenue, or do they just cost the taxpayers money? Recovery dollars that have gone the dollars that go into communities to say build a bridge. You hire engineers, typically in the private sector, some in the public, some in the private. You hire contractors. You hire people that do concrete. You hire a lot of folks in the private sector, and then that has spillover effects. So that if you, you hire that person who has the concrete, and then they go and they have more money, and so they spend it in their community, that's how those private sector jobs are created, Dr. Schiff, directly you, in the Or Mr. Directly. Schiff, do you feel that's a good return on your investment to spend those tax dollars that way? I mean, what's, what's your chance of making a profit? Well, first I want to point out that, you know, 99 percent of my income is taxed at the marginal rate, so the marginal rate is my rate. And if the federal government has taken 35 percent of my income and then another 3 percent for, 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 for Medicare, that's 38, and then when I have the state of Connecticut now almost 7 percent, I'm over 45 percent of my income in, in tax, and that's before I pay any property taxes or sales tax or anything else like that. And if you raise my taxes much more, I'm, that's it. I'm done. You know, I'm already moving businesses to Singapore, moving businesses uh, to the Caribbean uh, to try to go to lower tax jurisdictions. We are not a low tax country. We are a high tax country, and we're a much higher tax country than we used to be in the past by far. It takes two to tango. I mean, you can only borrow if somebody is saving. There has to be a lender on the other side of that transaction. It, there has to be something in it for the lender. You have to have higher interest rates. The problem is the banks are just getting money for, uh, from the Federal Reserve and turning around and buying treasuries with it. That's not going to grow the economy. That's going to grow the, the government. But meanwhile, these monetary policies are stifling the savings that we need to grow the economy. Mr. Lindsay, Mr. Schiff. Yeah, well, ideally, you would abolish the corporate tax completely. I mean, corporations don't pay the taxes. Their shareholders pay the taxes. So tax them at the shareholder level. The employees pay the taxes when they, when they, when they get paid. But again, ideally, we'd have no income tax. We'd have no payroll tax. If the federal government needs revenue, let it raise it through a national sales tax. It would be much more conducive uh, to tax people when they spend their wealth, not when they accumulate it. I agree with all that. The argument is always that, well, if we only tax uh, spending, uh, the rich don't spend all their money. Precisely. The money they don't spend is what grows the economy. That's what produces the jobs. If they're not spending the money, it's benefiting everybody but the rich. The rich enjoy their wealth when they spend it, and so that's a much better time to tax it. But as far as your, your budget plan, I think Congress is, is, is much underestimating how much time we have to deal with this crisis. I think there is a sovereign debt crisis and a currency crisis coming to this country soon maybe even before the next election. And that will be far more catastrophic to our economy uh, than what happened in 2008. Well said. I mean, I, I couldn't, the window of time to fix this is closing very rapidly, and it's, it just underscores how serious it is. Mr. Well, most top economists are saying that the President's uh, American Jobs Act will boost the economy and create jobs. And 
Mark Zandi, uh, Chief Economist for Moody's Analytics, is forecasting a 1.9 million job boost and a 2 percent lift for GDP if the President's package is passed as proposed. Um, this 2 percent tax uh, cut, Mr. Schiff, you, you're in agreement with that, that, that payroll? No. You, you're in disagreement with that? I think the deficits that will be created to finance that tax cut will do more damage to undermine this economy and destroy jobs than any benefit uh, we will get from the extra income being spent. The problem is the damage that the government does to the economy is not limited to taxation. It's spending. It's what the government is spending that is damaging the economy. And so if we run deficits instead of taxes, we actually do more damage. Deficit spending is more detrimental to the economy than taxation. I got you. But what we need to do is dramatically reduce.